Greninja is my favorite character. Okay. All right, game one. All right, this is a pretty standard start. All right, so these are two fast-moving characters. It's always going to be tough to catch Pikachu. Uh, it's actually also really tough to catch Greninja. He has a very low-profile run. Uh, his jump is really high, so he moves. He covers the vertical distance uh, even better than Pikachu. Uh, so mm -hmm. they're both slippery in their own ways. And right now, Jagron getting some pretty good damage. Uh, I really like that he's not trying to overextend. He's just keeping that neutral going. But uh, one false move and gets him off stage. Uh, Joe Pwn able to put him off there. Ooh, you know, a big aspect trade. of this matchup is the fact that uh, Reninja usually is a character that wants to get confirms. But Pikachu is so slippery as a character that getting even like a setup for a confirm can be extremely difficult. So a big part of this matchup for Jake Ryan is going to be trying to find those folks where you can get them just to get the damage where you can try to then get a safe kill move off because if he uh there's a very large chance he can have interactions like that and as a fastballer Pikachu can do a lot of damage very quickly against him. Yeah, definitely. Like he's he just needs to make sure that he doesn't like leave too many windows open for Joe Pwn to take advantage of. Right now they're doing pretty okay with even if uh percents. I'm pretty sure Greninja is heavier than Pikachu. Oh, it yep. doesn't matter because now he's off into the sky. So first stock uh, going to Jay Grunt. Uh, that's going to put him in a really good situation uh, where now you know he can take it easy uh, just a little bit and kind of just go for the more safe hits. Yeah, Pikachu does have a confirm and Nair to up smash, but it is up smash isn't a super strong move, so it's not a it's not very easy to actually like uh, to get a kill with that super yeah. early. So you have to have some rage or something kind of ready to go. Jagrid's taking advantage of the extra percent he's getting. Good awareness of the, of the danger of getting grabbed there. Up there, definitely not. Yeah, right now, Pikachu really doesn't have any, like, clear-cut, easy way to get a kill. Uh, dash attack is going to be a little bit too uh, telegraphed, like what he's looking for. And the other thing, uh, being up smash, but even that, not up smash, up throw, even then still wasn't able to get the kill. Um, as long as he's able to stay, ooh, never mind. Uh, caught his landing with the down air, sending him off the side, down air very strong. And now we're into a still relatively even situation. Uh, Joe Pone with a, a bit of a lead. Also, you asked uh, if uh, who's heavier, Greninja or Pikachu? Yeah. Uh, Pikachu is nine units heavier. Pikachu's heavier? No, not, I'm sorry. Oh. Greninja's nine units heavier than Pikachu. Spooked me. <laughs> Greninja's as heavy as Young Link. And I, was like, I was like, that poor frog. And what? Pikachu's as heavy as Kirby and Olimar. Yeah. All right, okay. Gotta, nice. Smash that up. Very good. I can imagine getting something like that on Wi-Fi. It's going to be pretty difficult. But uh, we, we, we take those. And uh, J uh, Jopon trying to return the favor with the same sort of setup. But we don't miss those techs. All right, we we stay teching. Yeah, man. Jagron was bred in the Wi-Fi. Any second, if you're not teching. The big thing in the Wi-Fi, especially, a lot of people they want to get those techs. Uh, they wanna they want you to miss tech because that means like a super early stock, with relatively little risk. Because if you uh if you get the miss tech, they just go for the jab, and if they get it, perfect. Mm -hmm. If you don't get it, oh. then they're just gonna oh, almost, almost tried to get it again. again. We wouldn't have killed, but it would have been a lot of damage, which is really important to right now. Would have been some good damage. Alright. Oh! Oh, okay. He messed up the Hydro Pump. He went, uh, he did up a few frames too late and fell down and then slammed his back onto the stage. Yeah, uh, I didn't actually know that that was actually actable ninja. Alright, quick attack read there. There's some interesting video that I saw earlier today that shows that uh, Pikachu's quick attack actually has 25 frames of uh, vulnerability if you parry it. Pikachu's what? Quick attack. So if Pikachu quick attacks through you at the end of the quick attack, he's actually vulnerable for 25 frames. Interesting. But you have to parry it. Sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure just it gonna is. gonna put out meaty nares instead. Hey Pikachu, hit this. Thank you. Sick trade. Maybe anyway. if the Pikachu is predictable with this quick attack, it's nice that there is a recourse that mm -hmm. you can use to punish it. Because uh, the video showed a link, a link oh, getting F smash. And oh, putting him into really deep. off deep off state. Oh my god. That was a good neutral air dodge. Using his uh, Greninja's pretty good air speed. 
to get back to the stage as opposed to a uh, direct wire dodge. Very nice. Oh man, dash attack almost doing it. Jigret needs to get back onto the stage safely. If he gets one confirmed, that's gonna be the stock. And nice F smash from Jopo. Barely just, just punishing the whiff perfectly. I'm sure uh, Baby Pikachu would be proud. Yeah, let's go. If you guys haven't seen Baby Pikachu, you should look it up. Before Pichu existed, they just had Baby Pikachus, and they're really cute. They're just little, small Pikachus. They're like, yo, what if we made Pikachu but smaller? Just a nice little small baby. It's kind of the greatest. He's kind of a cute little muffin. And he makes the little meme face. Yeah, they're all making the meme face in the screenshot that we were looking at, and it's great. They're just like, ah, oh, what? You know, oh, good jab lock and smash. So if for the jab lock, is there more vulner more vulnerability after the second jab lock than after the first? What do you, what do you mean? So when I see people doing the um, when I see people doing the jab locks. Mm -hmm. um, I usually see them do two hits. Well, yeah, because the third one is they're, they're not gonna. No, I know, but is there is there a reason for that? Like, is there more vulnerability after the second hit, or is it just to like get that extra? No, it's maximizing damage. That's all. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't one hundred percent certain if there was uh, any reason besides that. Three, two, which is why I wanted to know. And your battlefields in this economy? Okay. I don't know, man. There's a lot of platforms. The nice I think the thing most you is, can do is one platform. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing here is that uh, Greninja can take advantage of the fact that he can single hop to cover the top platform. I don't think he can land on it, but, like, he can cover it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he can uh, he can cover the, uh, the platforms with a lot of aerials. He has, like, the perfect jump height for that. Uh, both short hop gives him perfect coverage of the, of the bottom one, and then full hop gives him perfect coverage of the top one. So it's like it's ideal for him, yeah. especially like if he wants to try to force extra reads against a character like Pikachu. Uh, Pikachu, on the other hand, does have a lot of shenanigans and beautiful attack, but Joe relatively light on quick attacks compared to uh, a lot of other uh, Pikachu's. And yeah. I'll be right back. He uses Pikachu's uh, normal movement to really just kind of dance around so it's definitely something to not be used to but i'm sure that he has his quick attack movement in his back pocket in case he needs to get uh, a little bit more slippery which is actually great because it means he's building different habits and conditioning them for like how the neutral is going to uh like transpire in, in this one expected way of movement when he has literally access to this whole other dimension of movement but uh nonetheless jay grunt gonna take that first stock uh, catching his landing with down tilt and uh, ferrying him off. So once again, uh, Jagron in a pretty good situation, getting the first stock. Um, you know, but just like again in the last game, let's see if uh, Joe Pone's able to turn it around, either taking the slow game or just like getting what he needs to to bring it back and you know potentially make this a 2-0. Uh, or will Jagron like uh, is aware of where he messed up? I don't know. It it I don't know how I feel about all of these counters, and we're not taking that this time. I think he used all his techs in the first game, so now we have even stocks again. 50 damage is not that big of a deal. You are still in the lead, so you can play it safe, but you have to make sure that if you're playing for safe, that you can't really go for as many trades in this situation. Like you can go for trades if there's a stock difference, but when you're on the same stock, going for trades is still not great. And yeah, right now Jagron playing really cleanly, just like getting those hit the the uncontested hits. It's really great. Ooh, that one was a little bit risky, although maybe I think he tried to land behind him with that back air. That would have made that very safe. Oh, see now he's struggling to get down and Joe Pone's taking advantage again some uh, ju juggles going and even though that he, it had reset uh, Joe Pone was able to take control of that again and once and now evening up the percent Ooh. 
Okay. Trying to punish his landing, uh, punish his aerial with uh, seeing if he would fall onto the, the forward smash. Uh, Pikachu's forward smash doesn't have a hitbox inside his body, so if you have enough uh, positioning, then you can just hit him squarely alone. Okay. Great patience. Oh! Alright, makes it to center stage. I really like that. And was able to push Pikachu out. Really nice. Now, 140 is going to be difficult because uh, like any errant hit uh, can put him in a, a very precarious situation or potentially die from. But, we are on battlefield. Uh, large blast zones and a lot of options for movement because of all the platforms. So, you know, Joe... Uh, Jagrun already racking 70 damage, but at that point, uh, Jopone able to take the stock. Um, Solid-ish lead. Uh, really just gonna, what's gonna matter is these next few exchanges, if he's gonna super solidify that lead, or if Jopone's gonna even it up. Oh, okay, this could be the start of something big-ish. Uh, okay. All right, yeah, closing that gap really well, and there we go, 70 to 80. Uh, honestly, effectively, no difference. Um, so now we're, we're just going to go and play some sick neutral, hopefully. Ooh, okay. I oh, have oh unfortunate. Tried to fight him, uh, but... Not the best position you want to fight him in uh, when uh, you could die. Uh, you know, don't don't go for stuff like that. Uh, however, you know, really fun set, really just really uh, really good play by both of player uh, both of the players. I really like how they kept going like back and forth. Um, we we saw a lot of really good spacing. Uh, I think it's just like a really good like example. Nothing crazy happened, just like regular movement. Uh, just showing that they have like control over their characters. Um, but yeah, Joe Pone gonna take this out 2-0. Uh, good stuff to him. I should have our next set joining up soon. Uh, also, guys, if you uh, there's a thunderstorm happening in Tri-State, so you gotta be careful. We already had our second person DQ because of it. Not because they couldn't get to it, but because they're like, uh, something bad might be happening in my house. I'm going to go figure out what's up. So that's fun. And also, if we go dark for any reason, uh, that's probably...